accept. Yeah. All right. Good evening. How many of you own an EV? <clears throat> what is an EV, you ask? Well, an EV is an electric vehicle. An electric vehicle is made up of two components, a battery and an electric motor. <clears throat> but I mean, uh, you probably think it's a golf cart. Well, it's a lot bigger, a lot longer lasting, and it's a lot faster than your average golf cart. Why would you want an electric car? Well, look at it this way. Would you rather destroy the world, or would you rather clean it up? This is your home as well as it is mine, and it's our job to clean it up, clean up after ourselves. This is the point I'm trying to make. There is a lot that we can do to stop pollution of our world and clean up our air. And this is the first stage to start it. This is the stage that we can start to tell the companies and tell the world that we want to help clean up the environment. And this is to buy an EV. That's your moral reason about it. Financially, you're probably going to be way over your head in purchasing one of these vehicles. These beautiful EVs cost around $10,000 to $80,000. I know that may sound a lot, but I'm going to compare the pricing of owning a gas vehicle versus an electric vehicle. First, for the gas and the electric vehicle, or gas operated vehicle, if you're a person who averages 15,000 miles a year, I average 20,000 driving to school, work, and going out and all that. <coughs> but this is uh, your average person who drives 15,000 miles a year. You will end up spending $18,000 a year if your car gets 25 miles to the gallon and if prices are at $3 a gallon, which they're heading towards, if not more. In 10 years, you will have spent $18,000 and that's you can buy a brand new car with that price. <coughs> now you want to add in all your oil changes, your oil filters, air filters, changing up the clutch. <coughs> you know, this, the <coughs> main things that need to be changed in these cars, you're going to end up spending about $23,000 in 10 years. With the electric vehicle, you're, you're spending only, if you're driving the same amount of miles, and you, you get two cents a mile, to fuel up your car, if not free from powering it from solar panels or windmills, things of that like that, you'll end up spending three hundred dollars and one year driving fifteen hundred miles if you're using the grid, the electrical grid. Now that's a savings of fifteen hundred dollars compared to your gasoline vehicle a year. The batteries last up to one hundred thousand miles to one hundred fifty thousand miles, and with the growing and cost, as of now, $2,000 to $10,000. That's a lot of money for right now. But think about it, in 10 years, with the battery technology getting better and cheaper to make, they're gonna be a lot cheaper and a lot easier to buy and safer. So the cost for an EV to maintain and for 10 years is gonna cost you around six to $16,000, $16, and that's adding in all your to fuel it and to do the regular maintenance. So that's savings of $16,000 compared to your gasoline vehicles. And if you think EVs are slow, this car is going to make you change your mind. This can be any Ferrari or Porsche you put up against it. it this is an amazing machine. It goes 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. It has a char can last up to a 300 miles on one single charge. With the new battery technology that's coming out, it can charge within 10 minutes. Now that's as, that's as much as long as it takes you to truck, fuel up your car at a gas station. And this is free energy. So, this green and furious car costs about $92,000 as of right now. They're sold out for the entire year of 2007 and they only produced, I believe it was 100 this year. Next year in 2008 they're planning on producing about 10,000 and after that even more as they get factories and more places, more cheaper ways to build them, they're gonna go, they guarantee the prices to come down to $50,000, which is cheaper than your Ferrari or your Porsche, and it's faster. So, this next car is a truck. Now this, this is from Phoenix Motors, 
they have teamed up with Nanotechnologies uh, to produce this amazing truck that gets 400 pounds of torque per foot, and it will last you 130 miles. And the batteries that are in it will charge up in 10 seconds or 10 minutes, just as the the last uh, EV I showed you, and it'll plug right into your dryer outlet. This uh, vehicle also comes with a carbon fiber um, drive shaft weighing at an impressive five pounds. And it can haul loads of a thousand pounds, which is really good for an EV. And it'll still get you 130 miles of free <coughs> energy. This truck is starting out at $45,000, so it's a very economical truck, and it's very cheap, affordable to drive, and especially you get tax deductions once you buy these cars. So, and the tax deductions aren't that great as of right now, and hopefully they'll get better as people show that they want it. As attractive as these cars are, none of the bigger companies have even bothered to uh, start to manufacture them. In my opinion, I believe that the oil companies have been paying them off and telling them not to make them. To support this theory, GM had an EV, an electric vehicle, called the EV1. This EV1 was released in 95, 1995 and was then recalled in 2002 and they were crushed which is very sad it's in my eyes um, another company that also came out with another EV was Toyota they came out with the RAV4 EV which had a price of around $45,000 and with all the deductions came to $29,000 <coughs> That's a very affordable car, and especially in 96, which was, which would have been a great time for these to explode, but, I mean, in popularity wise. <laughs> <laughs> these both were only available in California and to no other states. They both were recalled at the same time as well, <coughs> when the West. California had a law passed called the the Zero Emissions Requirements Law, which had 10% uh, of all vehicles that came from manufacturers had to be EVs in California. That's why they were only sold in California. As soon as that draw was uh, eliminated, they took the cars off the market because I believe that the oil companies were paying them off, and it's really sad thing that our government was behind it too. So, ladies and gentlemen, students and teachers, it's up to you, us and you, or the, us. We need to sign the petitions online. They have many petitions online stating that to show these companies that we want electric vehicles. They also have ways of you to convert your cars. Take, you have an old car line around that you know doesn't work anymore. Take out the engine, put an electric motor. These conversion, they have conversion kits that cost up, they cost about ten thousand dollars. You need to know a little bit about uh, electric electrical work, but it's a cheap way to do it and it'll last you 10 years until you need to replace those batteries, which is only going to cost you about two grand, like I said, it's not cheaper by the time when you're going to need them. So we need to also buy from these companies that are coming out with new cars. These companies are new and they're trying to make money and they're trying to help the world, and it's a very good thing. But if you keep buying these gasoline-operated vehicles, you're just supporting the corruption of our government and the pollution of your homes. I'm, the speech is to persuade you to not only save your money, but it's also to help your children, children to have a better future and cleaner air. And that money that you save could go and help pay for their college. Thank you.